Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. As my channel has grown, I got a lot more questions on YouTube and a lot more requests on Facebook as well for, hey, can you please set up a bow how you would set up a bow from beginning to end? So I'm going to break this down into several smaller videos. I'm going to put all the products and all the details in the description below. You're welcome to check out those applicable links and purchase the things for yourself if you would like. But I'm going to start with this bow, which has now become my backup bow, believe it or not. If you follow my channel, I've sold my Bow Madness from PSC. And so this is my wife's very pretty pink diamond infinite edge, and it has now become my backup bow. So I have some uh, camo burlap to intertwine here in the riser to make it a little more camouflage and a lot less pink but I'm going to set this bow up I've already put it to a 30 inch draw length um, this diamond infinite edge is a very adjustable bow so it's able to go out to my 30 inch draw length so now I'm going to start where I always start which is setting up a knocking point so before I go ahead and set a knocking point and establish a D loop on this bow, I want to talk about what I would do if I were purchasing this bow brand new or if I bought a used bow and I was putting new strings on it. A brand new set of strings, whether they come on a new bow that gets shipped to you or you buy in a pro shop, or if you put new strings on an older bow that you buy second hand, you want to shoot them in first. Now this bow is brand new, but the strings are not. This was this bow was purchased a couple years ago. I bought it for my wife. We've shot it several times. I've shot it at 70 pounds for fun. She shot it at 37 pounds, which is her draw weight. So these strings have been shot in. So if there was any stretching that was gonna happen or settling that was going to happen, it has happened. But let's say you bought this brand new, the strings are brand new, or you put brand new strings on an old bow. I would establish a D loop. I would just kind of eyeball, I would take an arrow, and I would clip it onto the string or somehow find a level spot to put it and then I would put on a temporary D-loop. It would still be a good D-loop, but it would be a temporary one. And then I would shoot the bow about 40 to 50 times, just two feet away, blind bail at a target. You know, slap a rest on there, nothing special. Just make sure that I have the bow under tension, under poundage. I shoot it a whole bunch of times. It really would be a shame if you go to all the trouble of setting your knock height, setting cam timing, setting cam lean, all these sorts of things, and then you shoot it 40 or 50 times, you know, and sit, you know, practice in your backyard or at a range or whatever and the strings creep, which is just a fancy term for stretching, or they settle in and your peep starts to rotate, or your cams go out of sync, all these sorts of things. So if you're going to buy a new bow and it has new strings, if you're going to buy an old bow and put new strings on it, I highly recommend you do that. Once that is done, you have several options to be able to find a level knock travel, a perfectly perpendicular 90 degree point from where the arrow sits on the string to this hole right here, which is known as the burger button hole. I like to use a bow square. You can use either this T-shaped one or you could use the L-shaped one. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what company, whether it's from Carbon Express or Easton. All my stuff is Easton, so I continue to use that. Now, I don't have my rest bolted in here, and the reason is so I can see through the back of the burger button hole. Now, most bows like it a little bit knock high, so maybe not perfectly zero, but I rather would have the arrow leveled zero through the burger button hole, and then over here adjust my rest up and down. Everybody does a little bit differently, but that's how I like to do it. And I'm gonna look through the back of the burger button hole, and again, this is kind of, a, it's an eyeball test, but I'm really just trying to see where I wanna put my D loop. And like I said, I want this bottom edge. This bottom edge is representing of the, of the uh, this bottom edge of the T-square is representing the middle, the dead center of the arrow that I'm going to be shooting. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and look. I'm going to follow that bottom zero over to my string. Now, there are a couple things you could do to mark your string. You could take a silver Sharpie or some other off-colored Sharpie. You could take a piece of serving if you have serving, but my personal favorite is to take just a standard rubber band. With a rubber band that you can't do with a piece of serving or something like that, is that you can tighten it on there and you can make it wider but you can also loosen it and move it up and down a lot easier. What I can do now is I can actually line up the uh, the separation between the two you know loops of the rubber band right on that zero line. Before I really cinch it down I can just kind of wiggle it back and forth get it to where I want to be and that's where I want it to be. Really cinch that down on. I'm not going to snap it but that is really secure. Now the reason why I do a rubber band over a serving, or something like that, is that that's cinched on and that's not going to go anywhere unless I really start mucking around with it. But more importantly is that that rubber band, I found just a standard rubber band size, once you cinch it down all the way, it pretty much is exactly the right size for most arrows 
with their knocks. And so that thickness of that rubber band there is pretty much the thickness I want to keep my uh, to give myself adequate uh, um, distance between my top and bottom knot of my D loop when I go to tie that on, and that will allow me the opportunity to have good uh, uh, knock clearance when I'm back at full drive. A 30 inch draw length of a pretty long draw length, I can end up with a decent amount of knock pinch if I'm not careful. So now that I have it cinched on here, I'm going to take a pair of scissors, clip it off, not super close, I don't want it to pop off, but I'm going to clip it so that way I don't have this big long tag in hanging off. Okay, and there is my center, so I can now pop off my bow square. And now I'm ready to tie on my D loop and get that bow and get the bow started from there. There are already plenty of great video tutorials on how to tie a D loop onto a string, so I'm not going to go into it in depth. I'm going to get a D loop tied on here, and we're going to uh, continue with uh, with tuning the bow. All right, so I've established my D loop on here. My D loops are a little bit longer than your average person's D loop. I have about a 30 and a half inch draw length. At least I feel a lot more comfortable shooting at 30 and a half inches. Most bows, however, do not have the ability to go that extra half inch. Most of them stop at 30. This Diamond Infinite Edge is one of those bows. So I tie a D loop just a little bit longer, just makes that draw just a little bit more comfortable for me. So if you see that and you're like, geez, that's a really long D loop, that's why. Now, the nice thing here is I still have my little rubber band uh, tag in there. It hasn't moved anywhere. It's got a good, uh, good um, separation between my two knots of my D-loop. And so all I have to do is take a pair of pliers. I don't have to take a razor blade to cut out serving or anything weird like that. I can just pull that little piece of rubber band right out. There's no problem. Throw that away. And I now have a D-loop that is established. So the next step now is pressing the bow and putting it a peep sight. 